Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Jennifer Spellman, director of the lower middle schools at Westmark. Prior to joining Westmark School, Jen served in various capacities at the Milken Community High School, including as interim principal. She has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Jen, for joining us today. My pleasure. So this is a formative time in a child's life. Mm -hmm. Talk about the lower school and the middle school and the journey that children undertake at Westmark coming in from a lower school perspective, but also uh, perhaps entering as a middle school student uh, from, a, from another school. Um, I think that students coming in both in the lower school and middle school um, kind of share the same thing in that in coming to Westmark, they're usually coming from a place where they have had a lot of school failure, um, a lot of low self-esteem, a lot of anxiety surrounding school. Um, and it takes them a while to realize the fact that um, learning differently is acceptable at Westmark. And this is because many of these students, because they are learning uh, with dyslexia mm -hmm. and the schools aren't necessarily set up mm -hmm. to instruct dyslexic students, that those students are actually being instructed in a way that does not help their learning process. Any private school or public school that really caters to general education, even when there is a support department or a special education department in place, um, it's very hard for them to really meet the needs of the students from teaching them to read, um, really the way that they need to, but also I think the emotional and social component to that, in that um, students, when they are at other schools, they're spending so much time with tutoring after school, being pulled out of the classroom, and just continually feeling as though they're always one step behind. And I think that really, you know, for uh, lower school students and also middle school students as they go into adolescence, that really begins to shape a lot of their identity. So they definitely come from a place of feeling that they are less than um, and really not able to. And when they come to Westmark, they start to realize the fact that it's not really about what they can't do. It's really that they need to be in an environment where people are trained to teach them the way that they learn. Um, and I think that's a real shift for them um, in culture. And as a practical matter, it's very difficult for these uh, schools to handle uh, children who learn in a particular way, in a way that integrates the instructional approach mm -hmm. into the classroom. So you actually do have to remove the child from the classroom. That act mm -hmm. of removing the child from the classroom is such a traumatic experience that, that occurs day in and day out. Mm -hmm. uh, at Westmark, that's not necessary. No, it's not. Um, and I think that it's partly um, what makes Westmark, I think, different is that, on the one hand, um, our teachers are extremely skilled in all of the different um, you know, pedagogy methods of how to reach our students and teach our students. But ultimately, too, it's really part of uh, the culture of the school, that people really that work here are passionate about um, not only having these students make academic progress, but really about building their character, building their self-esteem. And really, you know, um, it goes back to kind of what at, is at the root of, you know, middle school and, and uh, lower school education, really developing the whole child. Um, and I think that's something that um, oftentimes you'll find when you're dealing with students that may need special support or special education, things can become very rote. It becomes much more about remediation. And here we're much more about filling in the gaps, having students make progress, but also make sure that they have the full experience of being part of a community and really exploring the things about them that um, they excel at. What's also interesting to me is, is the journey that parents uh, go through. It seems that uh, parents and children go through this process uh, because uh, these learning differences are not uh, recognized early mm -hmm. enough. They go through a process of cycling through frustration after frustration yes. after frustration, told that they're not good parents mm -hmm. um, and the children um, are not good learners. And of course, that's neither of which is true. They mm -hmm. just don't necessarily have the information required to make the right decisions. Yes, yeah. We, we talk a lot to new parents. Um, we actually spoke about this this year uh, at our new parent orientation, that for many parents, they the, the beginning of the year, it's almost Groundhog Day because they sit in an orientation at a school with their kids and they keep saying to themselves, this year is going to be different. 
this year is going to be different. I have a different tutor or I've gotten a different evaluation. And it's almost becomes that wishful thinking. And then, it, you know, they get into October and the year becomes the same. And um, I try to share with parents that, you know, in coming to Westmark, this year will be different. Um, and it's a it's a real I think it's I have a child who has a learning disability who's actually uh, started at Westmark this year. And um, it's a very uh, it's, I think it's a painful journey for parents, but I also think that when you um, become part of a community like Westmark and you meet other people that are on that similar journey, you start to be able to see, um, again, the things about your child that um, you can really take joy in and really celebrate and also realize that the fact that they learn differently is not necessarily something that um, needs to be grieved over or something that has a stigma that you need to hide. Indeed, it's a strength. Yeah, most definitely. It just needs to be cultivated as a strength. It does. And I think that um, when you're in an environment where you have teachers, educators that are really dedicated to making sure that these students reach their potential, um, it's a wonderful place to be for, I think, both the parents and, and the students. So let's talk about the two groups that, mm -hmm. that you are administering. Let's talk about the lower uh, st students first, because I know that uh, when, when somebody comes in a, as an older child, mm -hmm. Um, and, and parents of an older child, and, and incidentally, that's that's a very dis that's a very important distinction. Westmark seems to treat the the whole family situation mm -hmm. um, I I and respect the whole family situation in a, in a fundamentally different way than than other mm -hmm. uh, uh, schools uh, need to. I think that we really um, are committed to making parents and new students, when they come in, feel as though this is a place that we're here to partner with them. I think many parents who have a student um, that has a learning disability uh, in academic situations are always waiting for the other shoe to drop or waiting to be told that this isn't the right environment for their child right. or there's something that um, is just too significant for uh, for the school to be able to to help them with. So I think it takes, it, we're really committed to making parents feel as though they can open up with us, that we're here to partner with them, um, that we want to hear what's going well and what's not going well, and to really try to problem solve it with them. Uh, with lower school parents especially, part of that is parent education. Um, many parents that come to us with students who are going to third grade, um, they really um, are not clear yet about what their student's diagnosis means. And at times to them, it can seem as though um, they have been given you know, a life sentence. And they've, in many ways, interacted with people that have reinforced that. So it takes a lot of time to show them um, what, what their child is capable of. And I think that, you know, especially at the lower school, the students make such considerable progress in such a short amount of time um, in their reading, in their math skills. And the parents um, see that and they're, they're blown away. Um, and they really start to have faith in the program. And as the parents' anxiety level goes down, the students' anxiety level goes down. Um, middle school is similar. And I think that with middle school, parents are thinking a lot about college. And how is middle school going to fit into this college experience for my student? And they begin to see the program and realize the fact that the middle school program is not just about remediation of skills, that their students are having uh, very challenging projects and work in you know, all of their content area classes. Um, so it does, it, it really is a partnership with the parents for them to really feel like this is a place that they want to be. You've worked at a number of independent schools, and now you're working at Westmark, mm -hmm. which focuses on dyslexic uh, students. Yes. Talk about the different uh, pedagogical approaches, educational approaches that are used at an independent school that really focuses on sort of the normal uh, trajectory of, right. of education, and those like Westmark that focus on uh, teaching uh, uh, children with learning differences. I think all educators um, at their best want to teach all children. I think that um, at other private schools that I've been at, it has been more of the philosophy of how can the student fit into the classroom. Um, the classroom doesn't necessarily uh, change as much as we'd like it to, and we uh, you know, really work to just try to fit those students in and make the learning happen 
that possibly can happen. I think at Westmark, um, we come from a, a completely different perspective. So we really look at the student and say, what do we need to do in the classroom to make sure the student is learning? But don't most independent schools say that we are student-centric? I hear that so often. I think it is very difficult at a uh, maybe another independent school. Um, I'm sure they are student-centered, but I don't necessarily think that the student in that case um, mirrors the student that we have at Westmark. So perhaps the difference is not whether one is student-centric or not student-centric. Maybe it's a question of, of learning-centric. Each of the schools might be student-centric, uh, but indeed, when one is centered around a certain type of learning, yeah. there are, are certain assumptions built in. At Westmark, you have distinctive assumptions. I think it is, and I think at Westmark, um, we really try to move outside that box. So we really look at every student and really individually see how does this student learn and how does the classroom need to look different for every child. And how does this distinguish the approaches that, that your teachers take? Because your teachers are teaching, mm -hmm. in many respects, the exact same subjects, um, and you are preparing children for that journey to college. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the actual subject matters are very similar. The difference is not in the subject matter as much as it is the approach. So how does your how do how does a teacher who comes into Westmark from another independent school shift their approach? In it order it to is a it needs? is a it's a big shift, and it takes a lot of. Um, we really, as a school, commit a lot to professional development um, with teachers. I think all of, of the teachers that we have at Westmark have in common that they they have chosen Westmark because they really passionate believe in our mission. And our job really um, as, as leaders of the school or administrators is to make sure that we provide them with the training so that they really can reach the students in their classroom. And a lot of that is thinking about what each child needs to succeed. And when a teacher goes into the classroom, on the one hand, you know, they are, um, teaching content, but they also, probably more so than anywhere else, are really trying to teach students the skills that they can apply um, in any classroom to access that curriculum. When a student comes to us at Westmark, one of the first things that we really do is take a look at all of the information that has been gathered about them throughout you know, all the years they've really been in an academic setting. And we create um, what is a student education plan. And it's a very individualized plan that looks at students' strengths their affinities, what accommodations they need, what strategies they need, and we really sit down as a team and have a conversation about what this student is going to need in the classroom. And this is particularly focused on, on language? It is particularly focused on language with our students that have dyslexia. We're really looking at, um, aside from the, the information that's already been gathered on them, we actually go a further step and give them an individualized assessment. Um, and our reading specialists look at where they are right now and really specific skills of what are the areas that they really need help in. Is it decoding? Is it comprehension? Do we have a child that really can't visualize? Um, and what is their reading program going to look like? Um, at Westmark, our reading classes are four students in a class um, with a really well-trained um, reading specialist. And they, they really sit down and on a day-to-day -day basis, at the lower school, for example, all of our students have two hours a day intensive reading instruction. Um, that will continue into the middle school where some students are still having specialized um, instruction and some students are moving on to a more generalized reading class with comprehension. And this is so many of, uh, of, of the students that are, that are going through all of these. Mm -hmm. This is 100% of, of the students. 100% of the students. 100% of our students. So this is just a normal course mm -hmm. of the day. If you are a lower school student and you, you come to Westmark, um, your schedule would be that you would have two hours of reading instruction. Mm -hmm. Our reading instruction classes are actually integrated from three to five, mm -hmm. um, so we're really able to pinpoint what specific areas students are deficient in and what areas we want them to really to strengthen. Um, and we have students that make tremendous progress. Uh, we have a student that um, is in the fourth grade now. Last year he came to us uh, in third grade as a non-reader. Um, and at the end of the year, he actually got up on stage and um, did a uh, did a play where he was reading um, from the script and his in front of an audience in front of the entire school. 
oh, and also uh, his his family. So the uh, you know the the progress is very concrete. So within within a year from being mm -hmm. a non-reader yeah. to standing up mm -hmm. and reading in front of the entire school, uh, and that's you know that's not um, that's not uncommon. But I think the other important thing is that the reading intervention doesn't happen in a bubble. So it's not as if students go to a reading intervention class and then they are in their other classes and none of those strategies are being used. Mm -hmm. So for instance, our math classes, we um, talk a lot with the students about visualizing concepts, using manipulatives. Um, the same thing in social studies, in, in their um, English classes, much of the language and strategies that they learn in reading are really embedded into all the courses they take here. Um, it's the same thing with uh, many of our students uh, have uh, both dysgraphia and dyslexia, so writing is incredibly difficult for them. And we have a uh, very intensive writing program that we introduce to them and it goes across all their content classes. So they really have a formula for success that they know um, stepping into their science class or their history class, they have an organization, a structure to follow to, to create an essay. Um, one of the things that we have been uh, really innovative at Westmark with is um, harnessing technology for our students. Um, we know that when students leave Westmark um, and go into higher education, um, they are go what, one thing is they're going to be aware of their accommodations. And we really start at an early age. We actually started to have conversations with the students this year in third grade. And when you say their accommodations, mm -hmm. the what you mean there is how they learn and how they need to structure their own education mm -hmm. to accommodate how they learn. Basically, we um, we piloted this year an advisory program at both the lower and the middle school. Um, and what makes our advisory program, I would say, unique is that we use that as a vehicle to really demystify for students what their learning differences. So what does your diagnosis mean? How does your brain work? And then when you're in a classroom, what do you need from the teacher in order to succeed? Well, the interesting thing for me mm -hmm. is this focus on it's a difference. It's not a disease. It's not um, something that is wrong with you. It's mm -hmm. a difference. Some people are taller, some shorter. Taller people aren't going to ride around in hot European sports cars so they can't fit into them. Right? Yeah, and that's, I think that is really the critical uh, piece to success of being at Westmark is that for an early age teaching students that this isn't something that's right. wrong with you. And the more that students begin to feel comfortable for that, the more that they, when they're in a different educational setting, can communicate that to their instructor, that and they can go to college. as well. Yes, and, and say, you know, in your class, um, I want to be in this, uh, you know, I want to be in this English class in college. I want to be in this seminar class. I need you to know as a teacher, I need to have extended time. These are the things that legally I'm entitled to. These are the things that help me succeed and let me explain to you why. And the more that students feel comfortable, that stigma goes away for them and they're able to advocate for themselves. And ideally, you know, when a student graduates from Westmark, we want them to have the skills to succeed academically, mm -hmm. but we also want them to have the confidence and knowledge to communicate what they need to, to the person in the classroom that is really going to be their next teacher outside of Westmark. Um, and that is, uh, I think that's a very powerful thing for them. So in, in addition to having the teachers educated in mm -hmm. different approaches, in addition to the very small, tiny class sizes, in addition to um, using technological skills, you're also providing for um, children a, a, an ability to analyze um, their own learning mm -hmm. processes, adjust and most particularly to advocate yes. and to debate yes. and to confront and to drive. You're mm -hmm. actually pr providing some very, very useful life skills that anyone should really have. Yeah, I think that they are, they really are, um, they're life skills for, skills for everyone, but I think that those are the skills that are really critical for students who learn differently to succeed. And I think uh, across the board, when you look at research, when you look at um, individual cases, when you have students that are not taught to advocate for themselves or to really understand how they learn, um, they're not able to be successful. Once they get out of an environment where um, people speak the same language they speak, it's very hard for them to communicate what they need. And we really try to make sure that they're able to take that language with them. Um, and I think that the small class sizes, um, you 
know, our, our reading classes, as I said, are, are four to one. At the lower school, our math classes are six to one. Um, and the largest class we have are our social studies and science classes are at eight. Um, and that small ratio, we continue into the middle school. Our, our middle school math classes are at eight. Um, and we, you know, are, are really lucky that we also have, you know, our history classes or science classes at 12. So our students are in a situation where they have very um, strong relationships with adults. The adults know them very well. Um, they feel comfortable approaching adults, discussing with them what's going well, what's not going well. So they also begin to um, develop those interpersonal skills of really not seeing the teacher as someone that is in front of the classroom that they can approach, they can't talk to, they can't ask for help, but instead that's really someone there to guide them. Um, and that's extremely important to them if they're going to be successful outside of Westmark. Let's talk a bit about uh, the, the use of technology. One of the things that I've observed in, in many schools is that the way technology technology is being used is simply as a replacement mm -hmm. for other technologies. Instead of paper, you have pads, um, you have uh, these very various interactive uh, capabilities with, with boards that, that, that can also record um, the, the gestures mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But the actual use of technology is simply a replacement for what previously came. Mm -hmm. Books now are digitized right. and so on. At Westmark, it's quite a bit different. It's Technology different. <laughs> is actually used for its specific learning and communication mm -hmm. attributes uh, that connect to the pedagogies that you're, mm -hmm. that you're trying to mm -hmm. implement. Talk about how technology first ha is implemented, but also how it's, how it's changed over the last several years. I think that um, technology really has opened a door for our student population that is going to probably change their futures. Um, for us, technology um, isn't just something that enhances the curriculum. It's something that for many students um, allows them to access a curriculum that they may not otherwise ever really be able to interact with. So for our dyslexic students, having um, we at the school, you know, we have smart boards, we have laptops. Mm -hmm. um, this, this year will be our second year in a one-to-one -one iPad program. Um, and having the iPads has really opened up a door for both our students with dyslexia, but also our students with executive functioning issues, where they really have this one device where everything that they need um, to access throughout the day, everything that they need to con to continue to be organized, to complete assignments, is there mobily in one place for them and goes with them everywhere they go. So if I'm a student that has executive functioning issues, if I'm not able to organize, if I can't meet um, my deadlines, keep my papers organized, I literally learn at Westmark how to organize my papers, my books, my notes, all electronically in one place that's right there at my fingertips. In terms of, of what the pads can do, it can actually read the text. Mm -hmm. So if there's an issue, the student doesn't have to wait for the next day or wait for a parent no. Or, no. or whatever. Yeah. There's, a, there's such an, a, a, an empowerment that can take place when you can actually have a difficult sentence read yeah. And you could be looking at it, and it's it's a reinforcement. Your your classroom now is it moves along with it. You. Is um, it really encourages the students to be incredibly self-directed and empowered. And I think that um, you know, as I said, for for many of our students, just getting the pad there in front of them mm -hmm. is um, if you sat down and you had an English assignment, um, and you were one of our eighth graders, and you were not using. A technology and you just sat down with your paper and, and your notebook, mm -hmm. um, your first thought would be the, the 7,000 other things and resources that a teacher may have provided you with that you're not really sure where they went. Right. And to have that there in front of you and be able to read your text and be able to press and define a word or have a word read out loud to you. Or if you're someone that really has, um, and this is a case for many of our students who has a ver have very high comprehension rates, but your reading rate is very low, to be able to read a text and have it read it to to have it read to you really allows you to have access to literature you may not otherwise ever really have interacted with. Um, and that is incredibly empowering for students to be able to take part in a dialogue or a discussion in class that um, otherwise, if they didn't have that, they may not have been able to do that. And then in addition, you have the ability to uh, link pictures mm -hmm. with, with mm -hmm. text. So in, in many respects, you're moving through a, a three-dimensional thought space yeah. um, on the pads, and you can take 
information there, and if you're interested, you can actually look things up. Yeah, I mean, um, we really, over the past uh, year, um, we actually have uh, a professional development um, going on today um, at Westmark, where our, our, we've almost, we originally started a lot last year with looking about how to use uh, visual images mm -hmm. to help our students and link them to vocabulary, link them to concepts. We've moved beyond that to even having um, our teachers embedding video um, and embedding video of them actually actively reading and annotating and stopping at the book and showing um, and really using that flipped classroom model where students are going home, reading videos, listening to their teacher read aloud to them um, and coming into class and being much more equipped then to follow instruction. Um, a lot of teachers are really working with innovation of iBooks um, and working to really create um, you know, mediums where students can, uh, for instance, our, our third grade classrooms or fourth grade or fifth grade, they work to create their own interactive books. So really being able to be the, uh, the creator of, of the information that they're going to use and share with others. Um, so I think it is something that our students really take to and understand. And um, for them to be able to also be the, uh, the expert that in many cases is explaining to an adult how to use these tools. Um, they go home and explain to their parents, this is one of the applications that I'm using um, to get a better understanding of math and watch this video with me and you'll, you'll see how it was explained to me. Um, and parents are, uh, you know, being uh, the age of having a school-aged child, I mean, it really, uh, they are they are much more knowledgeable about it than us. And I think they take a lot away from feeling like they are the expert. So one of the things that um, I think that in coming to, to Westmark, people see all that we're doing academically and they, they really feel or worry that is my student going to really grow academically and their learning needs be met, but what about everything else that comes with the school experience? Socially, sports, mm -hmm. after school activity, art, and so yes. on and so and I, I think that um, one of the things that I'm really uh, impressed about and excited about is at both the lower and middle school, there has been such an investment in really building um, student life and also really the opportunity for students to explore things that they're passionate and really um, things that they're talented in. So a lower school student Student. They have art once a week, they have music once a week, um, they have instrumental music, they have theater music. Uh, we have a, a wonderful elective program where students are able to choose from taking robotics or cooking or literary magazine. Also once a week we have a technology course where students are really learning and creating technology. They're doing uh, programming and gaming um, as young as a third grade. Um, and as students go into the middle school, they also, um, having had that taste of it in the lower school, they're able to really dig a lot deeper into what they really feel passionate about. Um, and that happens during the school day, continuing in the electives. We have a real opportunity for students who get that taste of it during the school day to continue with enrichment after school. So we have a robotics team after school. We have a um, what we call lower school pop stars, which is a, a lower school singing group after school. We have a middle school glee club. Um, we have an amazing uh, youth filmmakers class. And our students um, just uh, completed uh, Zombie School, which was their, uh, their movie that they made, which was amazing. Um, so students um, also have the opportunity to pursue chess, uh, fencing, um, and we also have an amazing athletics program. So for our student athletes, coming to Westmark doesn't mean that um, their athletic their athletic uh, interests stop. We have uh, we have uh, touch football, we have tackle football uh, going into the high school. Um, we have soccer, we have basketball, volleyball. Um, so there really is a thriving student life outside of the classroom, and I think that um, that's really important. I think that as a parent choosing Westmark, you want to feel as as though you're addressing your students' needs, but you're also making sure that you're giving them opportunities to grow as a person. And I think for a lot of our students, as they start to um, really progress and they and they come to Westmark, so much of that anxiety of doing school outside of school um, ends. So they're not spending six or seven hours in tutoring just to be able to access and barely get by. And it opens up for them this whole new world of really being able to see themselves, not just as a student, but as a developing person. And um, it's really exciting. Well, Jennifer Spellman, thank you so thank much you. for sharing the experiences of students at, uh, at Westmark and Lower Middle School. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.